Okay, uh, good morning. I'm going to start just I, in advance. I want to say that uh, I'm sorry for my English. <laughs> I speak a very Spanish English, but for sure it's much better than my, my, my Italian. So if in any moment someone uh, lose the track, uh, just feel free to ask me as many times as, 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 uh, as you need. Okay. So um, today we want to talk, uh, we want to talk about training and conditioning in job basketball players. Uh, we are going to want to take, um, uh, want to share our idea, no? our vision on how we work with, with, with job athletes. Yes. Um, this is a topic in what uh, we could spend all day, but don't be afraid because we have only 40 minutes for the presentation. <laughs> And then uh, if someone of you have a, a question, I'll try to reply. Uh, I will try to reply all the, all the questions that you can, you can have during, the, during this presentation. So uh, my idea is go uh, to take a general view from the macro, macro to the specific. I mean, I want to show our roots, why we do what we do, and then we'll start a, a travel through the season, then uh, the weeks, and then uh, we want to arrive to the sessions uh, to see what we do in uh, day by day. Okay, I think this is a big, or very big, and uh, complex topic, and maybe not possible to cover all as I would like to. Okay, so at the end, I think uh, there could be a lot of questions. Uh, we can share a. a um, a very large moment to to talk about all the all the parts that I can cover with this with this uh, with this presentation. Okay. Well, I believe uh, that the first step in this travel, um, um, the S and C coach uh, travel uh, in what in what we are uh, working every day with with jazz athletes. I think the the first step we have to take is. Uh, to know where and with who uh, we want to work. I mean, it's important to know the way that institutions work or your club work. Uh, what are the principles or the framework or the people that is around you? Uh, what they speak about you and uh, what, what do you speak about yourself uh, working in this institution or club? So. Many times it's not the, 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 the way we work. Uh, sometimes we can do a very good job doing something that uh, nobody needs or, or nobody does it for. So sometimes our work uh, is not uh, the specific for the club we are working at. So we should ask uh, always before we before start working, um, where are we working or, or who are we working with? Uh, and that's when I think uh, should make uh, us feel good um, uh, always. If you don't feel good when you, when you answer this question, uh, maybe it's not the, 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 the place for us. So. Uh, in our work, in our club, uh, I think inside that the, the the club, in my opinion, we have a very positive uh, organization between the different areas. Uh, we don't have a triangular or central organization. Uh, we have an interconnected framework. Okay, um, uh, in this in this framework, uh, all the areas are able to speak and to give feedback to the to the to the other ones. Okay. Uh, in our framework, we, we, we can find uh, big four areas that uh, interact continuously. So there is uh, the, the, the management area, this first area we're gonna talk about, and uh, where uh, three different managers are responsible uh, for, uh, for the project recruitment or the organization of the staffs and all the logistic staff. So we can say that they provide us uh, for all we need for, for, for work, okay? Um, one main area is the technical staff, okay? In the under 18 team, we count with three coaches and a team manager, it's a lot of people working. And uh, we're gonna talk about the, the, what, what, what they're responsible. They are responsible for the technical or tactical practice and competition. So they design the task, uh, prepare the games, they, they scout the tactical menu, and they develop the specific skills planning for each player during the season. So they are the, the, the main responsible in the development of the, of the player. No? The rest of, of areas, we are just um, uh, helping these coaches uh, to develop the, 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 the potential of the player. So one of the biggest areas is the, the biomedical area. Okay? In this area, converts diverse professionals who are working 
very close, uh, sharing basic information about health or, or performance uh, or injuries of the, of the player, and uh, they are influencing ones to the others uh, constantly. Okay? In this area, we count with a, uh, with a doctor. Okay? Uh, we have a doctor, and it's the, uh, the responsible of the, of, the, of the medical staff. Um, we can with the physiotherapist. The, the physiotherapist. There is one physiotherapist for each team in the in the youth in the youth in the academy, and always there are three physios uh, at time in the facilities during the practice. So uh, we have uh, a lot of people working in this in this in this area in physiotherapies, and uh, uh, we work very very close to them uh, every day. Um, the SNC coaches. Uh, in the under 18 team, we are two strength and conditional coaches uh, working. And uh, for the under 16 and under 14, we have one uh, strength and condition coach for each team. Um, we count with two podiatrists, uh, two podiatrists uh, in the club, uh, one for the first team and another one for the job teams. In my opinion, um, this is a very important figure for us. In the sport, they provide us uh, very interesting information uh, about many things, just in assessment, uh, not only in assessment, uh, in, but in, in performance, in injury prevention, okay? And another important figure for us, uh, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a key figure, is the nutritionist. The nutritionist uh, is the person uh, who cares about the education of the players, about uh, when or how or what to eat to do it healthy. Okay, and uh, we all know that this is not an easy thing when working with, with, with teenagers. So it's a hard work, but it's important, very, very important. Another figure we are working with, uh, with uh, uh, from several years ago is the sports scientist. He's the, the responsible to take uh, data from the practices, uh, workouts, and games, and create and send reports to the different areas. Uh, the way that uh, these areas uh, uh, speak or get connected is, 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 is very complex, okay? Uh, all the areas can, uh, can uh, interact and uh, to give feedback to other ones, okay? In the middle of, of, in the middle of, this, of, of these areas, uh, uh, the most important thing is the, is the player, okay? Obviously, the player is our mission, it's our reason to trade, or all the work is approached to get an optimal development of the player. So he's in the middle of the process always. Yes. There are areas that influence other in the decision making. Um, and one of the most important for us uh, is the, the performance area and the system area. Okay. They provide tools especially to the to the to the stress and conditional coaches and to sports scientists to automatize the data collection the data processing and the visual data okay they make life easier and improve many many processes uh, to do it faster and, 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 and in, in an easy way okay and we can forget um, uh, that there are factors that not being part of the of the framework but uh, they impact in an important way in our work uh, we talk about the families, uh, the office people, the service department, and teacher. Okay, all of them promote and influence the young athlete development. Yes. Okay, in a in in an open communication uh, framework, we can find some 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 problems. Okay, uh, basically we find uh, three problems. Uh, uh, we can think that the the, the thing is. Uh, uh, the same thing in, in three parts, in different parts, okay? Uh, uh, when so many people is involved, sometimes it uh, can create some problem with the communication, principally for we are in the same point at this moment, but we come from different places. So we have different academic formation, experiences in or out the sport and different expectation about our job, okay? Uh, another important uh, topic in this, uh, I think, uh, for me is very, very important is that we don't speak the same language, okay? Especially technical professions in the, in the sports, uh, we use a very special vocabulary. Sometimes uh, when we speak about external load or load management or prevention, strength training, uh, physiology staff, and, and sometimes we don't understand that the coach or the manager doesn't understand anything we are talking about. So it's our fault. We should make us understand in the essentials uh, in this in this in this work. Okay, and in the third in the third part we can find interference in communication. So 
uh, when all the areas interact, it's common to find black spaces in communication. I mean, uh, sometimes the doctor talks about the about a, about the player uh, with the coach, but uh, he didn't. Uh, with us. So uh, there's a uh, space without information and sometimes we can feel that we don't have information enough uh, uh, and, and this could be a problem. So how can we fix this? Well, uh, in the first point, uh, we, have to, we have to know that we all influence the others. Right? But if all of us share the mission, create a common goal and a collective way, if we all share the aims, uh, won't be an easy way, but it will be effective. So we have to, um, first of all, to share the mission, okay? Share the vision, the mission, and, and, and share the, the, the goals for the, for the player. If we are in the same way, sometimes it's not easy, it's gonna be hard to, 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 to share away, but uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be effective. The second point, the key for me is education, okay? Uh, we must try to show to other professionals what is important for us, okay? What impact in our work. If they know that, it's, it's easier to, 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 to get connected, yes? We have very positive experience in this way. The people around us always uh, want to know more and they are able to learn our language and more about our job. So we should do this. Um, and many times when I talk uh, with a coach about the uh, load management, uh, I, I, can, I can perceive that they don't understand many. Okay? They trust about us many, they trust many. So uh, they let us decide about the, 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 the load of the player, but sometimes they do it just because they, they trust, not because they understand. So I think it's important to, 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 to educate the, the coaches in our language and the coach talking us uh, with the with the freedom for 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 making him understand yes and in the third part uh, we have to look for efficient ways of communication okay sometimes a simple informal conversation with a coffee is enough uh, we don't need the uh, always mails or 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 meetings or, or, or larger meetings uh, sometimes with 15 minutes in a, in, a, in a coffee machine is enough to, to talk about a prayer or about a, a problem or about a, um, what is important this day or this week, okay? Uh, we have designed that this small moments way to meet and talk about important topics of the day, just a few minutes. Uh, um, we used to, with the, with the doctor and the, with the physiotherapist, uh, we used to have a coffee always on Mondays, on Thursdays, this, the day after the game and the day after the rest or the day off. And we talk about what we are going to do for the, for the two days, uh, two days uh, later. So it's enough, 15 minutes with a coffee. And if there's a more important, a more important uh, topic, we can um, uh, organize a meeting or something, but uh, many times it's, it's not necessary. Just, just, just talk about it, yes? Okay, the, the, the framework for the uh, sport and conditional coach uh, is very special, okay? The most important thing is that we keep uh, a very close uh, professional and personal relationship. Um, it, it, it's not necessary the, the personal relationship, but in this case, it's, for us, it's, it's, it's great, okay? We have a good relationship between us and, and we are very close uh, professional and, and, and personal. Uh, we keep in constant contact and all of gets, all of us, uh, uh, we get involved uh, with the project, and I think that's 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 the key. Okay, in this image we can see that uh, the SNC coach, the sport and, uh, uh, and conditional coach, the first team Juan is very very close to us. Okay, he's uh, he's he got a direct relationship uh, with us. He's close to the to the to the just teams and keeping contact with us, developing the programs and supporting uh, the, the the work we do. Okay. Uh, as you see in the image, um, the, the sport scientist is, is the same for, for the first team and for the job team. So this is good for us because we can get always the same information about the evolution uh, of, uh, of a player when he goes on and he goes from a category to another one uh, higher and with the some player from the young under 18 uh, team goes with the first team for a practice of a game uh, we have the same information in all the levels so it, this is important important for us in the uh, in the under 18 team we we come with two 
uh, strength and conditional coaches. And for the under 16 and under 14, we count with one, uh, with one SSC coach, okay? Uh, at time, we count with internship students from the university in the last uh, year of the grade or in the, in, the, in the master, people from the master, and they are helping us uh, with several, several projects that, uh, the, that we are developing. Uh, sometimes helping with, uh, with, the, with the workouts or with the, or, or taking data, or, okay? So we have a lot of people working around the, this project. We are counting on, 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 on 10 persons, 100 people in this, in this area. Okay, uh, when we are talking about the principles, uh, we have, uh, before to start working, uh, we have to, 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 to take the, a long-term view, okay? What we want to do or what we expect uh, about our job, uh, from the moment a player is in, in, in the club for first time in, in, in with 12 years or 13 years, and uh, if he could uh, reach the first team, what we want uh, to, to, to offer to this, to this player, yes? Okay, uh, one of the principle uh, is uh, to develop previous potential in different, in different sites related to personal growth, academics, sport, or psychosocial, okay? Not only in sport, yes? Uh, we want to get the maximum players from the youth to the first team. This is a, a main objective for us. Uh, it's very good for us when a, when a youth uh, player that uh, has been uh, playing for the, for the youth teams in the, in the club and he can go with the first team for, for practice or for, or for, or for games for, for all the people in the, in the academy, it's, it's a great moment, okay? Because it's one of our objectives. The, the players from the youth teams are able to, to, to be in the first team. And at last, uh, we have to provide the longest and healthiest sport life as possible. So we have to help the, the, the athlete uh, to have a very healthy sport life and um, to grow uh, with, uh, with an optimal stimulus uh, to get a longer, a longer sport life, okay? Here we can see um, the, the, in this slide, we can see the physical development and performance model adapted from, from different authors. Um, uh, in this model, uh, provides a more considered and evidence-based approach to the long-term development of, of, of young uh, athletes. Okay? This suggests that the capacities the, that we should be focused depending on the age, not not on the age and uh, chronologic, uh, but uh, bi biologic. Okay, uh, they propose two main capacities: the coordinative capacity. I think is the more in, the most important in the in the, in the first years. Uh, uh, they suggest that being focused on mobility, fundamental movement skills, and specific specific sport um, skills. So it's important to consider that in the first stages we should be focused in mobility and fundamental movement skills. Yes. Um, in, in, in coordinative capacities. In conditional, I think the, the, the most important in these stages are the, the, the velocity, okay? uh, reaction velocity or reaction uh, speed, and uh, not so uh, velocity in the, in, the, in, the, in the movements or in the, or, or in the, in the running, uh, but yes, in the, in the capacity of, of react fast, okay? Uh, also, authors recommend that mobility development and maintenance should be an essential part of uh, uh, any athletic pro program uh, to ensure uh, athletes are capable of reaching and requisite terms of motion required for basketball. And, and we can think, or we should think, that uh, these athletes sometimes is going to be those another sport. So uh, we we should promote that the. Um, they work in different sports before uh, before uh, they have a, 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 a specific training. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, in uh, in the second level of of, of this long term uh, view, we can find the goals. Uh, the, we learn the goals for a whole session. It's, it's just one session objectives or. or or mains, okay? The objective is to reach the principles for a long term, but divide them in several seasons. We mean as the objective for this is the, the goals are reduce 
a risk of injury see? to provide to the athlete availability uh, to perform as much of practice games as possible as a basic for his development to give the player the optimal uh, stimuli and recovery uh, to his age physiological development according to team needs it's, it's important too uh, the position he has in the team the projection uh, he, he could have in the in the team it's important to to, to structure the sport okay uh, it's important to reach peak of performance in isolated moments of the season uh, it's important um, to compete in several moments of the of the season in a high level so uh, it's not easy and sometimes we can um, talk about that the, it's not it's not um, true that we can reach this peak of performance for a whole team. Okay, it's, it's, it's true. Okay, we try to reach uh, the, this peak just for 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 one for one person. Uh, Maybe difficult, but for a whole team, it's impossible. Okay, but we try that in 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 puncture moment of the of the of the season, the players. Uh, uh, could, could get a high performance uh, um, uh, through the tapering or, or management load, okay? Um, but it's not easy, you know, we're gonna see some ex examples uh, uh, ahead. Okay? If the player gets injured, to get a quick recovery with maximum warranty for not relapsing, okay? Uh, it's not so important the quick, but yes, the warranty for not relapsing, okay? And the weekly targets, in the, we, we, we can see the season, but we have to separate the objective for the, for the, for the week. In the weekly targets, uh, we can introduce all the contents that uh, we must uh, see in every single season to reach the, the, the season goals. Okay, the most important for us uh, are these seven, this is the assessment and load monitoring, okay? uh, contents in injury prevention, the pre and post competition strategies, activation or warm up or on, on, on recovery, Development loads, uh, we're going to talk about this now. Return to train on return route to competition or performance strategies when the, when the player gets injured and promote healthy habits in the athlete, such as rest, nutrition, irritation, and facilitate a positive social context. Yes, today we're going to be focused in the number one, two, and four. Okay, it's for, for today is the most, uh, the most important for this presentation. Okay, assessment and probation. Okay, this is a very interesting uh, topic for me. Okay, one of the first step the, uh, we talk to the players is the, the, the assessment. Okay, uh, I constantly, I'm wondering constantly, uh, what do I want to know uh, about the player? Mm -hmm. It's everything interesting or not? I mean, what information is important and, and relevant for me? Yes. We can think about the, as much information as possible, the better, but, but not always is, 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 is true, okay? We can manage a uh, limited amount of, of information. We can manage many, many information. We have a limited amount of, of, of information. And we should be sure that the information we take is the important one, okay? I make this reflection because I'm trying uh, to answer a vital question for me. So about what are we preventing? Yes, what's my job in this way? Well, I can say I'm preventing injuries, and then I wonder what injuries and how can I reduce this incident? It's, it's, it's in my hand, yes? Well, uh, I think the, 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 the basic uh, answer to this question is that individual aside is the base of performance and prevention. There's no another, another way, yes? Uh, Individualizing is, I think, is the the, the, the the only way to prevention. Okay, but we should ask that the, the question is prevention, does it work? Okay, the success in the programs of injury prevention depends on many, many, many factors. Okay, in most of them, uh, we, the, the strength and conditional coaches, have a limited or near control. Yes, as much factors taken under consideration, we will get more success in our interventions. Okay, yes, but uh, I think we should accept that prevention is a, a, a multifactorial stuff, okay? And many times we don't understand how the different factors are interacting between them, because we are talking about an ecological, complex, and dynamic system, yes? So, in this way, there are two uh, very interesting studies for me that shed light on this issue. One of these is, is this, and this study, the injury iceberg, uh, 
treat this topic from an holistic way and consider that prevention depends on five level factors. Yes. Uh, these level factors uh, goes from the intrapersonal to the society. Um, this brings us the, 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 the thought about the importance of all of us as a society in the development of the of the player self. Yes, we can or, or we still uh, understand the, the, the injury as, 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 a, as in, a, in a holistic way. Okay, injury is perceived to uh, be a physical event resulting from the sudden release of environmental energy producing tissue damage in an, in an individual. Okay? This reduction perspective overlooks the importance of a psychological and sociological determinant of injury, the psychological, psychosocial uh, model we're talking about. Okay? Safety has physical, psychological, and sociological dimension. So it's inherently an ecological concept uh, we can separate these, these, these factors and always are going to be interacting between them. Yes. So it's inherently an ecological concept. Uh, we can separate and this intervention I mean to achieve long term improvement in community safety must seek to develop sustainable safety. OK. Another study in this in this in this way. Uh, it's more specific to the to the to the training practice. Uh, are that uh, there are numerous factors that influence injury rates in elite sporting teams. Okay, and many of them are intricately related. I mean, if we see the image, we can see the injury prevention programs are not in the first steps of the um, of the injury prevention. So these programs that we are always uh, this and exercise specifically or, or work this muscle of this movement uh, specifically for, 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 for injury prevention are not as effective as we think. So we have a lot of many bases before that we have to, well, that we have to, to, uh, uh, to work, okay? Before we, um, we take up this uh, designing uh, prevention programs, uh, we have to work a lot in, another, in another ways, okay? To achieve sustainable success in the equation of injury rates, we must understand not only each of those potential factors in isolation, okay, but also the relationship. Um, these both studies tackle the idea that for preventing the training program is not as efficient as a plenty of healthy habits. So as Hippocrates said, before you heal someone, ask him if he's willing to give up uh, the things that made him sick. Okay, uh, it's not so important. Uh, the, the image for me is uh, that uh, sometimes uh, we are fighting with a lot of habits, uh, just with uh, with a small program for for prevention. So it's more important uh, to to work on the education of the of the player about the habits, uh, involving the the club, uh, the families. Uh, uh, we have to know about the community and the society of this player. Uh, um, for 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 manage a lot of information uh, to create good habits and, and and education staffs. Okay, and this is more important than to design an injury prevention program. It's important injury prevention program. We're going to see what we do now, uh, but I think that this not is not going to be effective if we are uh, uh, fighting with a lot of habits. Okay, so. Um, uh, important, uh, important part of our work with with, with just athletes provide of training strategies. Okay, um, but first of all, we should provide a good education to coaches and managers about the importance of uh, creating habits in the everyday training. Okay, uh, in this study, we can see that the each of soccer injuries can be reduced by preventive interventions. Okay, especially in low skill level of teams, so it's important in, in, in the academy. Okay, but coaches and players need better education regarding injury prevention strategies. Okay, we should include such interventions as part of the regular training, not just a, a program that I do one day. So it's an habit and a habit that I have to to keep during all my life. Okay, my sport life. Yes, um, with the aim to individualize. The training programs for injury prevention and for physical development, we have to keep in mind several factors. Okay, uh, due to sport, age, and sex influence to a type of injuries, the assessment and prevention program must be specific. I mean, that for me, assessment and prevention are both part of the same process and can go in different ways. I mean, it can be the same assessment or prevention program for different sports, okay, even for two different players in the same sport. 
it's something very specific. Uh, if it's not, uh, it loses efficacy. Yes. So we divide to 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 make it specific in the process uh, to individual insights in three levels. Okay, from the more generic to the more particular. Yes, the first level is based on the spore characteristic, and it could seem contradictory because this level is equal for all basketball players, and we could think that it's in it's not individual. But the first way to individual decide is separated by spore. Yes, the second level is about individual characteristics, and the third level about circumstantial state of players. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the first level, uh, if we look uh, at this image. Uh, we can see two team sports, okay, with uh, many similarities. Yes, very similar sports, maybe, if we think about the team sport, uh, in both sports, shares, uh, the player shares the spaces with the opponents, uh, the content is allowed, but if we see the images, uh, we can quickly uh, imagine that a rugby player is explicit, explicit to different risks than a basketball player. Yes? So, the sports involve, involve an intrinsic uh, risk of injury due to characteristic of efforts, explosive action, technical skills, uh, competition format or context. Yes. So injuries are not a specific of an sport. Okay. In, 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 in many sports, I can suffer the same, the same, the same injury, but the sport run to a specific type of injuries. Yes. And this is import, important, uh, important for us. For this reason, our first lever is the sport characteristic. So what a, bas a basketball player is supposed to, yes? I mean, simply for play basketball, our players are likely to suffer a specific type of injury, okay? There are many studies that describe the incidence uh, or prevalence of the severity of the injuries in basketball. And the result of these studies can change depending on the level of the players, the sex or the age. But in common, we could agree that there are a more likely uh, set of injuries uh, just for basketball, okay? I think this, there are many, many, many studies. I like this study because um, uh, they have a, a, a great vision about, about injuries, no? okay? They, they, they measure a lot of injuries and, and, and during uh, many years, and uh, we can make a, a good, uh, we can take a good picture about the, 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 the injuries in, in, in basketball, okay? Uh, another, another study that I like much, because in the many, in the, in the most of the studies, we can find that uh, this is the, the most common uh, injuries in, in men and in women. But uh, a recently a study, like very much, is what I ask what injury is. Okay, uh, most of the of the studies uh, say that an injury is, is uh, we can consider an injury when you lose a practice or a or a game or a competition. Yes, and in, in this study. Uh, they try to consider a non-time lose injury. I mean, uh, you can get injured, but you keep on training or keep on uh, uh, in the competition, keep on playing. So uh, uh, most of the studies didn't consider that a, a competition uh, injury, sorry. So what do they say, the author says? They say that when non-time lose injuries were taken into consideration, boys and girls secondary school in just basketball, injury rates were higher than previously reported, okay? Uh, that the rate of injury for, for girls secondary basketball was higher than for boys, consistent with early reports. But in the, in the, in the other study, we see that the men's, if, if we only consider uh, the loss of competition and practice as injury, uh, men's used to have more, uh, more injuries uh, during, the, during the season, okay? Compared with time loss injuries, non-time loss injuries accounted for a larger proportion and higher rate of injuries overall. So we should consider um, the injury uh, not only when a, when a player can, uh, can't play or, 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 or get into a practice or, or, or lose some of them, we should consider uh, the loss of uh, performance because of an injury, okay? I can uh, be a part of a practice with a, with a with a loss of, of, of performance just for an injury, okay? I should consider that. And now we, 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 can, uh, we can ask, them, what can we do for this? Okay, there are yeah, evidence available that we can, through 
training programs uh, reduce the incidence of, of these injuries, okay? There are consensus uh, that some interventions, uh, proprioception and strain based, uh, that, that works, okay? Uh, if we look at the figure, uh, we see how the injuries are significantly reduced when a well-designed program is used. So, especially in the strain, that this is point, in the strain, uh, we can reduce the three th uh, 33% of the, of the of the total injuries, okay, with a with a with a weight of strength, and the half of the overuse injuries, I think, is is is, is amazing. This is the number of reduction of injuries, and in the other, in the second in the second place, we can find the proprioception um, uh, intervention are very very effective in this in this way too. Okay, so strength and proprioception, uh, it, it seems that are the most effective uh, program for, for, for preventing injuries, yes. Uh, in a more specific study uh, about basketball, in this meta-analysis, it's very interesting, uh, the meta-analysis results indicate that injury prevention programs are effective in reducing the incidence of general lower extremity injuries in basketball players, yes. So, uh, uh, we work we have been talking about the, the habits, okay? It's important to change the habits, uh, good education. Um, uh, this is the first, for me, this should be the first, the first intervention to do. But as a strength and conditional coaches, we should uh, design, design injury preparation programs, uh, calls in all the studies are telling to us that, that they are effective. So we should, we should keep working on it, yes? Uh, in the second level, um, uh, it's basic to the characteristic of the of the players. Okay, at the moment, uh, this moment uh, with out of technology available for us, we do much about the sport. Okay, we know the the distance our players run in a game, the number of jumps or sprints they do, uh, the physical demands of a, of, a, of a game. We know much about it. Okay, so in this level, as, as Cirulo said. And the new paradigm is not to know your sport, but your athletes, yes? Uh, we try to know many things, uh, not about the sport, but about the player. So we just assess a wide number of factors and characteristics that could give us an idea about what's um, the player's history, okay? Well, what's his potential development? What is the risk or, or, of, of injury? Or, or simply uh, the moment physical level, okay? Uh, but not everything is important in, in, in this data collection. So not, all the import, not all the information is important for us, okay? We have to balance between what I want to know, uh, what, what should I know about, the, about, about my player, okay? What I'm able to know, what, what are my means, my tools, uh, uh, what amount of time that I can spend in this assessment because they're very important is training, not, not, not all the assets I have to train, okay? And what's really significant for me and my players. So what, what we should assess, okay? I think we should assess the potential capability of our athletes to confront the harmful natural action, okay? The high intention action. Most, most of the times, okay? We know that the player have to face during practice and competition. Uh, uh, so it's important that I know if my players are going to be efficient in peak demands. Yes, this, this is what I would like to, to assess. There are many studies available that make a correlation with a lack of specific uh, functional capacity and a risk of injury. So if we know the physical demands of my sport, and I know the physical capabilities of my player, uh, I think I have or I'll get a very specific and primary scenario to work in prevention. Hmm? Okay. Due to evidence, uh, uh, we consider uh, useful uh, this set of assessment tools uh, to determine the physical and functional level of my athlete in base to uh, musculoskeletal or neuromuscular, cardiovascular or metabolic condition. Okay. The data obtained uh, give us the possibility to recognize the evolution of the player over the season and over the different categories from the under 14, under 18. I can see how my, my, my athletes are, are, are developing or, or are getting better, okay? Additionally, with, the, with this set of tools, uh, we can detect uh, asymmetries or deficits or a lack of mobility, neuromuscular function, stability, balance, many, many, many things, okay? showing us a key as aspect to, uh, to improve, okay? Finally, if, if with this set of tools, uh, we, we, we can find 
remarkable deficits, uh, we got uh, information enough that contribute to draw an individual baseline to reach uh, in case of injury uh, in the future. Okay? Um, we can find that one of the most important is the history of the player, the medical history and the sport history. Okay? Uh, I've been uh, injured in the past. Okay? Uh, is there any injury that we can see repeated in, the, in his history? Have he ever uh, played in a high level or uh, how many hours in the in the week he have a, a practice or workout? Okay, the anthropometric measurements are very important just uh, to see the, the the evolution of my of, of my player. Okay, we used to assess the weight, the height, uh, the long distance between between arms. Yes, the max weight, uh, the lead weight in, in kilo, kilograms for the for the for the muscle weight, and the percent the slaughter and cartilage just for the fat. Yes. The functional assessment is very, very, very important for us. Okay, um, if we mix the information with functional and physical test assessment, we can make a very, very, very important idea of what's the the, the level of my, of my player. In the functional assessment, uh, we uh, we look at the ankle test for uh, dorsiflexion mobility cause a lack of mobility in the in the in the ankle is um, is correlated with uh, with uh, knee and hip injuries in uh, in the long term so for us it's very very important the single leg squat for us uh, give um, uh, many information about the stability and coordination of the and the strength for the for the for the athlete, especially in the in the in the youngest or in the weakness uh, players, we can see that they don't do very well this exercise. So it's important uh, to 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 know what are the the uh, the problems in the in the in the different chains or muscle chains for 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 this test. Okay. The drop jump with one and two legs, just to know the reactive index. Yes, uh, we can see the neuromuscular uh, response or functional. The Y balance and the star excursion balance test, just for global stability. Uh, we we um, we assess the, the balance of the of the player. A set of hop tests, the six hop tests we use. Um, single leg, uh, sorry, single hop test, the triple hop test, the crossover, the six meter time it, and uh, we used to do the, the, the lateral hop test, yes, and uh, the repeated hop test for, for, for 30 seconds, yes. And this pack of test I like very much because not only the quantity, uh, the number or the distance they do, but uh, the quality of movement is important for us. Uh, we can uh, record the jumps and uh, we see how the alignment of the different segments like the hip, knee, ankle, uh, we can uh, we can assess uh, how how the quality of the movement, uh, he can control this jump, this landing is very important for us. And the functional movement screening basic, the deep squat test, the step test and core test. Okay, this is the functional assessment, and I think we, we, we got a lot of information important for us with this. The physical test, just to see what's the, 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 the capacity of the of the of the for, for for strength, basically for strength and 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 aerobic aerobic uh, power. Okay, contra movement jump, yes, the drop jump, not only the height, uh, the height of the jump, but the uh, the time they they, they stay in jump. Uh, the, the, the time they stay in the floor uh, before the jump in the drop jump is important for us. Okay, this test is is not a common test because it's a test that uh, I think we, uh, we 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 only use <laughs> because um, because we invite this. Okay, uh, this is three jumps, and six courts, and three jumps. Okay, this is a test that uh, Juan Trapero, the strength and conditional coach for the first team, designed it just like a, like a training method, but later he thought this uh, interesting, interesting test. Okay, um, we measure the, the height of the, of the jumps and the loss of height of the jump after the six spring courts. Okay, the T-test and the T-test adapted just with ball uh, dribbling. Okay and takes for maximal strength yes and uh, in the last in the last um, in the last moment uh, once we have all this information during the practice uh, we we use the load monitoring just to know about the um, 
about the um, what is um, important to measure during the, the the practice for us. What information can we get? Okay, tracking accelerometry uh, is is very important for us. Uh, um, the internal load we are going to talk not much about this internal load. Objective like uh, contramoment jam and uh, blood analytics and internal load, yes, subjective. Uh, the RPE, we are going to talk very, very few about it uh, later. Okay. Uh, everybody knows about this, so I will be brief, very, very brief with this. Okay. We understand external load um, like an objective measure of the work performed by the athlete. Um, during a training or a game, okay? And the internal load as the re response of the, of the relative external load imputed uh, during the training or games, yes? In our context, uh, you will use uh, LPS or local position systems and micro technology to, to, to monitor the external load, okay? Atlas tracking technologies have allowed us to understand training approaches but have created a data tsunami as so we we can uh, manage all the information that we get in every in every practice it's too much for us so uh, we are actually focusing six or seven parameters per, per 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 practice or per game that are the player load the explosive force the uh, the distance covers over um, 18 kilometers per hour uh, number of jumps and running in balance yes uh, the most important is understand that uh, comparison uh, uh, between players are to be avoided. Yes, uh, we have to compare the load, place it for an activity or a given context to the usual to understand how was the external load. So, for example, uh, if a project covers three kilometers in, in a match day plus two, a good way that led us to understand how was the external load is okay it was a 15% less than an usual match day plus two. So today was an easy session. Yes, we can compare uh, uh, the player uh, with himself in the same context always. Okay, we, 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 we avoid to compare the player with the rest of the team. Yes. In this slide, um, we see a, longitud a longitudinal metric that uh, we tend to use for, for, for this, okay? The weekly chain is an easy tool uh, that uh, lets us to know how it's been the last seven days compared to our previous seven days, okay? It's useful for us because it uh, lets us to avoid the uh, high spike in the, in the IQ low, okay? And this is one. Uh, you can see how we use the acute chronic workload ratio, okay? It has uh, recently uh, come under criticism, okay, and, and, and we are open to read everything, uh, and, and, and we are, um, we are um, very, very, very interested in how is uh, and, and how this uh, topic is is, is 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 growing. So there's a lot of a lot of a lot of. Uh, or many factors that can influence in this in this in this ratio. Okay, but uh, we know that under the discrediting, uh, some researchers asking for it to be uh, dismissed. Okay, we know about all the limitation, but the reality is that we are still using it for this reason. Okay, we use uncoupled and exponential weighted moving average. Okay, and the percent with these ratios and the percent provide us a guide for how much to overload or deload. Yes. For example, in this in this image, we see how this player in the actual width has accumulated a 2,000 player load. Okay, that is 35% more um, respect to the load that the player has been prepared for. So, if we see that, we should consider our, uh, or manage another tools or internal load or another parameters to understand what's happening. Okay, this is not a final uh, a final factor for us, but it's uh, important to see oh, what's happening here. Yes. So, acute chronic workload ratio beside weekly chain let us to manage the load for each athlete. This is important for us. Yes. In this slide, uh, I will be brief because I think that David Ferioli uh, will speak later about this topic. So, 
I will put emphasis uh, in, 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 in that we must know the limitation. There are different RPE scales, different definition, the use of colors, moment of the question, type of question, um, part versus whole body RPE. So taking under consideration this aspect, we have to follow uh, our uh, robust uh, methodology. For example, in our context, uh, we always use the same question it's important for us okay the player respond always 30 minutes after the practice to avoid the large experiences perception and we try to avoid that the that the uh, that the players or the teammates uh, hear the answer okay uh, from a perspective the most important thing is the athlete education they need to understand why how and what are we measuring okay for example if we miss one to ten rpa scale uh, player must know that five is not half of 10, okay? Five is difficult, so it's moderate. Yeah? So if we see this graph proposed by Tim Gabbett, we're able to examine the relationship between external and, and internal load, yes? For example, the top in right, we can see internal load, high, low, and external load, high, low. And we can see different squares in which uh, we can find our, our, our players, yes? In the top right, we see athletes that have performance, uh, greater external load and the planet and their internal workload is also higher than expected. It may be necessary to decrease workload, okay? We can see if our player are in maladaptation or they need, or they are in a, in a, in a high deficiency adaptation or we should increase load, okay? This different square gives us an impression about our players in that moment, okay? So, based on this, and in order to adapt the training of the, of the athlete states, uh, we have developed a different type of session uh, trying to apply the optimal load in, in every moment, okay? So you can see how divide the different sessions, yes? We have a load session, prevention, recovery, compensatory, and rehab or return to train, yes? The low uh, session is focused in the development of physical capacities as maximal strength, power, aerobic power, um, we have to understand that the, for the common characteristics of the players and the specific of, uh, of, of, of the sport, uh, many times we come with a very homogenic population in the team, okay? In this session, we can divide the workout in general and individual, yes? When we talk about in general, uh, it's due to age and biological, biological development, and many of the projects require similar type of work, okay? So part of this session is common to, to, to most players. Another part of the session is individual due to the individual characteristics of the player and the position. Okay? It's possible to increase the specific work for individual or a small group of three or four players. Yes? In prevention, uh, we can talk as we are before, uh, we have part in practice two types of prevention programs. One specific on the sport basis and for all the players and another uh, based on the characteristics of the players. This is individual. Yes. In recovery, uh, the aim is to avoid nauseous effects of, of, of the practice of competition and boost recovery between the force, okay? especially in high density competition. Yes, the general plans are includes mobility, active recovery, hydro or cryotherapy, nutrition, rest, sleep. Yes, and the individual is based on a specific sports for external internal load, overload, pain, or, or, or dysfunction. Yes. Um, in this uh, session, it's especially important to collaborate with the other professionals in the biomedical area. Uh, in moments of high density of games, are the moments of decision in the championship, in which we can play seven games in seven days, and sometimes 15 games in, in 22 days. Uh, or sometimes if we detect that uh, uh, the player getting to the maladaptation square, it's mandatory to focus on recovery. It's very, very important. Okay? In other moments, we can try to facilitate just uh, with the recovery, uh, facilitate the adaptation after the specific workouts. Uh, for example, uh, heat after strength sessions. Yes. In the compensatory session, we come with a large number of players in the team. And uh, sometimes uh, the players are not available to play for technical decision. Okay. For this player, the game day is not a day off. Yes, we try to balance the game load, uh, the game load, sorry, to boost the state of the player to be available for the coach in the future. Uh, if the coach doesn't come with the player uh, three games in a row, he could lose condition. Okay, so we try, he doesn't. Uh, we have developed a set of exercises for every player 
uh, based on the specific demands and the individual profile uh, for the player in the in competition. So in the game day, the player add the load similar to competition and not lose the day, okay? And there we have our return to train uh, session. Um, this work is closely agreed with the clinical professionals and doctor and physio and it's 10% individual and very, very, very focused to incorporate the player in the team dynamic, yes? As soon as possible with maximum safety. This is very, very important for us, yes? And what include in our uh, global programs for injury prevention? Okay, evidence-based contents on the basis of epidemiology, epidemiology and injury incidents in basketball, okay? The, more, the most important contents for us are the strength-based training, is mandatory for us, the sensitive, perceptive, and motor re-education, okay, this is a very, very a good relationship with uh, proprioception, yes. The reactive strain or neuromuscular, uh, neuromuscular uh, training, lack of mobility, uh, detect it and, and work on it, and weakness in the way we see compensation about the movements, yes. For us, it's very important to, to work on core and hip stabilizers, yes. Biomechanic efficiency, quality of movement in, in, the, in the general and specific the, the movement for the, for the sport. A strength and functional contralateral difference. The asymmetry is very important and, and have a very good um, correlation with the risk of injury when this asymmetry is larger than 10% between uh, lower limbs. And uh, motor control deficit, yes? So if we see the global programs, we could say that the best injury prevention program is a good physical training. So this, we are a, a, a fundamental part of, of, of these programs, it's, it's, it's our job, yes? And this is an example for a week uh, for, the, for the junior team, yes? Uh, we have in a morning session, okay, and an afternoon sessions uh, for uh, strength and conditional, and then the technical or tactical session, yes? Uh, Mondays in the morning before go to school, uh, we have a session. If they play on 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 Sunday, uh, we can uh, we can uh, promote a active recovery for the for the morning Monday morning. And if they didn't have a game, we can work on the strength, maximal strength. It's a good day. It's a good moment in the morning to work maximal strength. Okay. In the afternoon, we try to do the preventive, the preventive session and the develop load session. Yes, we can uh, focus on maximal strength or power. Yes, uh, on Tuesday, we, we, we used to do the maximal strength, the preventive session, and then maximal strength and uh, aerobic power. Yes, uh, we're gonna talk about basketball in the, in the, in the last moment. Yes, uh, uh, this is the day off for all, okay? Uh, on Thursday, uh, the, the session is very similar to Monday. We come from a rest day or day off. So today we can do a, a, a most exigent or most intense uh, work, okay? For maximal strength and power. Mm -hmm. And Friday before the, the day before a match, because the junior team is, is playing two, two different leagues. So we, we play on Saturday and Sunday. We have two games for, for each week, yes? Uh, on, and on Friday, we race in the morning and in the, in the afternoon, we have the preventive and individual work and a mixed low and load, uh, mixed low load um, uh, for, the, for the practice with, uh, with the coaches, okay? And after the practice, we have a, a active recovery or physiotherapy, yes? For the practice or the basketball uh, training, uh, based on the on the external and internal load, the measures we have, we have decided to uh, promote a biomechanical low load on Monday, metabolic high load on Tuesday. Okay, and Thursday is a metabolic it's mix, but uh, metabolic uh, session. And uh, on Friday we have a mixed low load. Yes. Uh, on Saturday and Sunday, we have the game and the, the players that doesn't play the, the game, uh, they have a preventive and individual load or compensatory, okay? We can think about if uh, we find a lot of uh, load accumulation, uh, one of two days as a, as a day off or a stay, yes? Well, so 
a science practice approach that uh, we use in our training session is split the drills in different uh, physical orientations uh, for the for, uh, basketball practice. Yes, uh, metabolic demands, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, drills or exercise with more distance and high speed distance covered. Okay, and the biomechanical demands is for us is the drills that where the majority of the load is uh, devoted from internal parameters like acceleration, deceleration, explosion forward or jumps. Yes. Furthermore, uh, uh, we have to take under consideration some external factor like full of hard cold duration or dribbling limitation that will determine uh, our uh, our orientation of the of the of the drills. Okay, if we can, um, if we see this this. Uh, uh, this is scale plot. We can see the most used exercise by our coach. And on the left, we see the exercise uh, with more metabolic orientation, and in the right, the exercise with, uh, that provides more biomechanical demands. Okay? But we have uh, several uh, external factors uh, that, uh, that could uh, promote that an exercise goes from the left to the right. I mean, in an exercise as five on five, this is in this in this in this point, uh, that tend to be physiological orientation. If we play a game with two five points, uh, for example, and just let the player just two dribblings, and we do the exercise on a half court, an exercise with physiological orientation is transformed uh, to be a mechanical orientation. So, uh, in base of these factors, uh, sometimes we can uh, decide the orientation of the of the of the basketball uh, of the basketball uh, practice. Yes. Now to end my presentation, just I would like to highlight two quotes. One of Miguel Angel Rodellar. This is an Andorra strength and conditional coach that uh, said that planning is an art that requires science, creativity, and common sense. Okay. And then the second quote is for for is from uh, someone very special for me. That's Juan Trapero. He's the the first team strength and conditional coach in in Real Madrid. That always tell me that we shouldn't. Mathematicize this word doesn't exist in, in, in English, just it's telling to us that uh, the training is not maths. Okay. Uh, he said that we never, uh, we should never lose our observation ability. Uh, we have to look at the player, look at the process, look at the game many times uh, during the practice or the games. We are uh, watching at screen, just uh, watching the load, the numbers, uh, uh, the graphics, uh, the figures. And uh, he said that we have to look at the player, how it's moving uh, now, uh, uh, how is the quality of the moving, what is the, the what is the, the, the expression in his face, okay, so that's important. So what really matters are the basics, yes, we have to uh, promote the habits, yes, yes, I mean with this is you have to uh, 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 training, um, give uh, uh, special uh, attention to the nutrition and sleep, and the training basket and the family and social life and the school and other activities and repeat okay we have to create an, a healthy habit for this uh, for this player to 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 promote this his development uh, to to long term yes i just want to thank you i want to thank <clears throat> to enrique alonso too uh, one of my partners in the in the strength and conditional coach area in real madrid who helped me to to, to do this presentation with the graphics and the, the number He's the responsible for the external internal loading in the team. So thank you very much. And if you have some question, um, I'll, I'll be uh, happy to, to answer. Carlos, thank you very much. It was a very interesting and very clear presentation, I've got to say. Uh, there are a few questions in the, uh, from the audience. So if you don't mind, we'll just go through a couple mm -hmm. of them. Oh, nice to see you now. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, the first one would be um, if you would say there is a, where is the boundary between uh, the crossover between physiotherapists and strength and conditioning coaches in the rehabilitation process? Yes, this is a, a I'm physio too. I'm a strength and condition. I'm physio. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's easy because uh, I can have the two vision, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, there's a conflict in this in this point. I always say that uh, between physiotherapy and the social conditional coach, there is not a line. Okay, there is a, there is a, um, 
it's a space that is not uh, is not clear who who had to work in, in this moment because uh, a physio should work a strength with a with a injured player. I think yes, okay, but who is the specialist uh, working strength? Uh, is the is the strength and condition? So it's not easy easy answer. I think is the, the the only way is the the, the working in a, in a in a team. Okay, we have to uh, we have to share the same uh, the same aims. So the line is. If we have to mark a line, the line for me is uh, the functional, uh, the functional preparation and the specific preparation. Okay, the functional preparation is always for the physiotherapist. So I mean, if the player, uh, the, the work with the physiotherapist is it's over when the player could be a, a normal life. Okay, but it couldn't be as a professional uh, sportman. Yes, uh, the specific preparation is for the strength and conditional coach and the functional just for the for the physiotherapist. If I have to mark a line. I don't like the line. Yes, I like and I love that uh, if you go to our facilities and go to the gym, the physios are all well into the gym working with mm. with injured with injured uh, players, and I like much. And the strength and conditional coach, we are always in the in the physiotherapy uh, room, uh, just learning or, or talking. I, I like this this kind of relationship interaction. Um, the, I've got a few questions about uh, <clears throat> testing, so I'm just going to try and yeah. summarize the, some of them. Um, so uh, how much time do you invest and the frequency uh, of time you invest in, in the testing process? Yes, uh, you, are, you have seen a lot of tests. Um, I think it's, for us it's, it's, it's easy because we have a lot of people working in the strength and conditional area. We are, we are talking about 10 persons or 10 people. Um, so it's, it's easier than, than if you are only the strength and conditional of, of a team with 12 players doing so many, so many, so many tests. Um, uh, for, I, I like to do just three tests or three moments to test or to assess in the, in the, in the season. And at the, in the, in the pre-season, on, in the middle of the season and the final season. Um, this can change if you have a, or you detect that you have a player with a lack of mobility, uh, you have to test uh, weekly, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't have many problems, I think that you shouldn't spend more than two days in three times of the season. I mean, two days in precision, two days in the middle of the season, two days at the end of the season, mm -hmm. because the, the, the important for a strength and conditional coach is, 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 is training, okay? Is the, is the, is the training, not, not, not assess. Assess is important to individualize or, or get an individual program. No, 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 for another thing. Good. And one, one last question before uh, we let you go. It's about, uh, again, it's a mix of a couple of questions. Um, for, um, for the calculation of the internal load, uh, what kind of system do you use and uh, which variables do you take into consideration the most? The internal load, uh, we only assess it with RPE. We use RPE session and RPE and differential. Uh, we use four RPE, okay? RPE of the session and RPE for uh, uh, cardiopulmonary uh, four, for uh, uh, biomechanic four, for muscle shortness four, and for cognitive four. So we use uh, four, four, four types of RPE, and then uh, is the, is the, is the the most common uh, tool we use. Uh, sometimes we use contra movement jump, but, but but I don't like much because a volative test um, always you need the, for the uh, you need that the player wants to do it the the, the best. Uh, not always is, is 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 we are in this point. And um, and blood analytics sometimes uh, three times for in the season we use to 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 detect uh, blood markers for 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 fatigue. But um, basically RPE.